877-970-2999. You could call in any question you have. Uh, this, uh, the, the gentleman is uh, Dr. Stephen Greer, practicing surgeon, pioneering how hospitals care for the elderly. He also became a Wall Street analyst and portfolio manager 20 years ago, author of the book, Rules to Stop Radicals. All right, so you can have your health or your finance questions answered by Dr. Greer, 877-970-2999. Hey, Dr. Stephen, welcome back to the show. Hey, good to be back. Well, you are the man. You are the man. You are so ahead of the curve. I got to tell you right now, and, and I'm telling you, we, everything you talked about, Dr. Greer, and I keep giving you a shout out on the program, and I did as I did today, you talked about, and, and we played the audio uh, last week, played the audio of you just saying very casually, oh, we have, we have some drugs for this virus. And you said rem, remdesivir. You said you talked about hydroxychloroquine and z You were there. What is going on with the government? What's going on? Why, are, why did you know everything that we're finding out about two months after the fact, sir? <laughs> well, thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, well, uh, they knew about it. They just don't talk about it. I don't know. I don't know. Like, but, you know, people in the business who invest in stocks uh, related to drugs, they, they knew about it. Like, and that's what I do. So uh, I, I guess the Wall Street people, that, you know, I think the smartest analysts in the world aren't from the CIA. They're from they're from hedge funds. If you want to if you want to have a <laughs> CIA run well, just go to go to Steve Cohen's hedge fund and pick them. <laughs> and wait, 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 hey, wait a minute. Yeah, you can give us some stock tips. You, I'm, we're going to go to you yeah. for some stock. Come on, Doc. We're ready for it. I mean, but you're, you hey, know, uh, do you, is, no, yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, I'm sorry, Rendisri, I got approved on Friday the same day I said it would because the FDA always approves stuff on Friday. So we got that right. I don't know what the stock will do today. The whole market is down, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. You said March 17th, you said the FDA uh, could approve the uh, Gilead drug uh, remdesivir tomorrow on Friday, and they did. You knew that. But it, why is it, Doc? And then I'll, I'll move on from this because, again, I want to give you accolades, and I can't say it enough. And if you're listening, we talked to Dr. Stephen Greer, gentleman who talked to me back a couple months ago already, March 7th, uh, roughly six weeks, a month, uh, two months ago almost, about that they have drugs. And then I called a friend, Doc. I called a friend who's in the pharmaceutical yeah. business. He goes, yeah, man. He yeah. goes, uh we, he goes, we knew all about this. Why? Why? It it just feels, and forgive me for being conspiratorial here and being ne- yep. New Jersey, New Jersey neurotic, you know? I'm just like, I'm just questioning everything. Why they won't they jump on this? It's like they don't want to find a cure, Doc. What are they, what well, are they, why are they holding this up? Is there a financial reason for this? Is there a political reason like I suspect for this, Dr. Greer? Yeah. Yes, yes, all of those. Uh, that, that's the topic we... We were sort of speculating about this last time, and I didn't know the facts. Now we know. I looked into this by calling some uh, hospital. I got the CEO of one of the Queens hospitals on the phone, you know, and I also wow, spoke to man. a nurse. But then, then making YouTube viral was a nurse uh, spilling the beans about what it's like going on, and then YouTube removed it. So uh, these death rates um, coming from New York are many times greater than any other big city. There's no biological explanation for that. It's not like the people in New York are suddenly more susceptible than the people in Miami or L.A. So there's two things going on. Number one, they're flat out inflating the death rates. It's a fact. We know this, that any they're being encouraged to write coronavirus as the cause of death, even if they're not even tested, okay? Yeah. Why they would want to inflate those numbers is up to you. We can speculate. Uh, now, about the drugs, they are not. This is my worst. This is what I suspected, and it, and it's and it's just something terrible. Is the patients are not getting hydroxychloroquine. They're laughing at it. They're not. They're certainly not getting remdesivir. That's been available the whole time. It just got approved by the FDA, but you still could have gotten it on compassionate use. So, when you go into these uh, bad hospitals in the Queens and Brooklyn, so far, all the death rates are. They're not getting medications. They're going through the motions, and then they're putting them on a ventilator just to say they did it. And those ventilators, if you don't monitor them, will hurt your lungs. Sure enough, they're blowing out the lungs like overinflating a tire. Wow. And they're killing wow. people. And they're killing people. Oh, and, 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 and it's a disgrace. It, it, it's manslaughter. It's literally manslaughter. Somebody needs to go to jail for this. 
Jeez, and and is it? But somebody said, yeah, you're right about the ventilators. They kept saying ventilators, ventilators, and I, after I, it, that was after you and I chatted, Doctor Greer. And I'm saying, no, don't be he's screaming and whining about ventilators. Be talk about drugs. Let's get the drugs. Let's get some kind of drugs that are out there on the market already. Is is a is a CPAC thing? You know, the C, that CPAC thing is that better than a ventilator, perhaps? Well, that's just a component you, you, they found giving it along with the hydroxychloroquine. One is to, the z will prevent a, a bacterial pneumonia. The hydroxychloroquine yeah. will yeah. will prevent the cytokine storm, and it's and it's the best thing. But but better than that is an antiviral drug like remdesivir. If you give it, see, it was approved only for really sick people, by, you know, on the ventilator. But if you give it earlier on, you, you can probably cure everybody. So uh, so that that is really good news. Look for remdesivir to be approved in further studies in a pill form for wow. millions of wow. people to take, you know, before they're sick and, you know, in the hospital. So yeah. that will help the country. If, if in three months, you know, when the, the, you're afraid the fall flu is going to come back and all this, if we have a pill that can treat people, that's going to really help uh, open the country up. And we'll get more drugs like that, too. There's a few yeah. more in the pipeline. So. And I understand the clinical test and the anecdotal information. I understand all that. But, man, if they listen to you, if they listen to you when this first thing started, how many lives could have been saved, uh, Dr. Greer? I really I really uh, appreciate your expertise. And also what you're saying about the inflated deaths. I want to stay on that because, you know what, I'm tired of being yeah. bullied yeah. By, by politicians. Yeah. I'm tired of being bullied uh, by the, the medical arena and those the, the, the official, you know, si- quote, unquote, scientists. When, when I'm talking to you and I'm hearing common sense and then I'm vetting what you and I chat about, with friends in in the medical uh, you know institutions around the country and who have healthcare uh, companies themselves and they're saying exactly what you said and then I read this article that I retweeted this morning uh, from the National Center for Health Statistics it's from the CDC and it said indeed they that they they may have uh, in, inflated the numbers and were more like at and one death is too many surely but we're more yep. at thirty seven thousand yep. than seventy thousand that makes me crazy yep. because they're just trying to scare us aren't they doc uh, you know, you can make your own speculation I, by inflating the numbers. What does Governor Cuomo get out of it? Well, he gets power of ho- putting you under house arrest for sure. It helps justify his causes and he doesn't look like an idiot. And maybe there's some federal funds they're angling for or all of the above. I, I don't know, yeah. but they're doing it. They're, it's just... a fact the doctor, the doctors are getting death certificate forms and they're saying, hey, if you have any doubt at all, just write coronavirus, even if they haven't even been tested. OK, it's a scam. Yeah. It's a joke. Yeah, well, doctor, and you can, doctor. Yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, I hear what you said. Dr. Yeah, Burks herself at, said. Yeah, go ahead. Uh-huh. I, oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, look at the chart. I mean, it, the chart of New York deaths is hundreds of times greater than any other big city. It just doesn't make any biological sense. These are government bureaucrats in New York. It's, it, but you can't even trust their their death numbers. They, they, you know, well, what, I'm sorry, what you about the, Dr. Burke? The, no, and, and the and yeah, well, Dr. Burke said exactly what you're saying too. You know about that about they they just they're mislabeling the death. But we're seeing a lot of deaths in nursing homes, especially in New York. Uh, what, uh, what, what happened? What happened? What could we be doing differently? Why, how did we get hit so hard in nursing homes? And why wasn't uh, anybody aware of this, Dr. Greer? All right. Well, see. In my clinical practice, I do a few things. One of them is because 20 years ago I did research on it, and it's a weird little specialty I have. And that I, I deal with chronic wounds, bed sores. Those happen to be nursing home patients. So I got to the field, and so I know this. And, and nursing homes, people understand, they're not really hospitals. They're just legally, they're just apartments that have assisted living, food service, and stuff. You know, so they're not hospitals. The nurses, they're not capable of dealing with an infectious disease problem. And Governor Cuomo, to, uh, to show that the hospital rates were going down or whatever bureaucratic idiotic reason, forced infected people from the hospitals into the nursing homes. Of course, they spread them. Now, the total number of all New York deaths is at least 25% of all those is from nursing homes. They, they are slaughtering people because no and, and, and because the news doesn't report on it until recently and that's the manslaughter if you can intentionally send a deadly virus into a nursing home knowing it's going to kill other people yeah someone's got to go to jail for that 
Yeah, it's it's inexcusable. Also, they had the beds at the Javits Center. They had the beds on the United States Navy ship, the Comfort. They came in, and uh, a friend of ours who came on, a sheriff from uh, Monmouth County, Sean Golden, said, why didn't they take the veterans out of these homes or the old people out of the homes and put yep. them on these ships where they had room? I mean, I'm, everything Absolutely. is so – and, and, and oh, in your book, if I may, Dr. Greer, The Medical Advocate, you expose the problems of the hospital sy- system itself, which now seems like – I'll play a mile compared to what we're seeing in New York, but how can our hospitals learn from what, what the heck happened uh, as we go forward, sir? Uh, yeah, well, uh, it's a unique New York problem. Uh, you know, I don't think I haven't heard about it, that it's happened like this anywhere else. So these horrific, idiotic moves made by the state of New York, I hopefully is, is, is isolated to New York. Uh, but in general, uh, there, there's a whole bunch of problems. Yeah, just read my book. I mean, even before this stuff happened, we had a really failing healthcare system, and um, we'll talk about that some other day. Yeah, because man, any any ideas? But how? Like, if you feel, how, what do we do going forward? We're gonna get out there. We're gonna get out and about. Uh-huh. People are restless. I, I'm looking around. People are around anyway. What could we? Uh-huh. What could we do to make sure that we don't get sick, Doctor Greer? Uh. Well, by now, we pretty much know that the virus is not that it, it's if you happen. To, I, I think it's a genetic factor. Some people have a switch, a gene somewhere that makes them really so, susceptible. But the vast majority of people, it's like a common cold at the worst. So I wouldn't worry about it. You can't control it. If, OK, if you're elderly, have immune you know, risk, stay yeah. away, self-quarantine yourself. That's the main priority. I would focus on the masses of 350 million people. They don't need to worry about it. Is is if you're sick, if you're elderly, et cetera, et cetera, self quarantine yourself. Uh, and then if you do get it, make sure you have a competent doctor uh, who's who's willing to give you medication. Don't just sit there and wait until you get sick and have to be on a ventilator. So insist and demand that you get the medications. Yeah, I mean, tell me about this, um, the antibody test, the regular test. How many tests? Do they know what they're doing? It sounds so confusing to me, Dr. Greer. You're the only guy making sense. How, what do we do? We go, do you get the antibody test? I got to take the saliva test. Do you have to get them both? You got to get one or the other? Yeah. Is there one test we can get that will settle all the problems, Dr. Greer? Well, you're not the only one confused because there's not a good answer to that. So um, right now, the little point of care Abbott test uh, that you can prick your finger and get a result. That's um, uh, pretty good, but it's limited in supply. Uh, then if you wanted to wait two days, you just get the nasal swab and it goes off to a central lab like Quest or LabCorp. Uh-huh. That's pretty reliable. That'll just tell you whether you have the virus on you. Uh, you're actively getting the virus. The, uh, uh, and then Roche just today got approval for now. In, in general, an antibody test says you you've already had it, and that's why you have antibodies in your blood. That means you're probably immune to it based on how biology works. Okay, some people are saying, oh, it doesn't mean you're immune. You're probably immune to it. Okay, so if you get a positive antibody, that's a good thing. That means you can go back to work. I would start doing that with healthcare providers, people in the front line, and all that sort of thing, so they don't have to worry. Um, and then the virus test from your nose or whatever just says, okay, stay home, uh, don't go to work. But we're not going to be able to do that for everybody, nor should we. We don't need to. Uh, the virus we now know is not nearly as deadly as we thought. I think everyone in the vast majority of the country can go back to work, and then uh, uh, the herd immunity like Sweden will happen. So yeah, um, yeah. that there's there, there's no evidence, despite that aging failed former scientist named Tony Fauci, that social <laughs> social <laughs> distancing has done anything. It had there's no evidence that it's done squat, and and so <laughs> all right, okay, all right. <laughs> you know what? I look. Hey, by the way, you know, you, by the way, yes sir, yes sir. When Brad when Brad Pitt. <laughs> did his impersonation yeah. of Tony yeah. Fauci. You know what that yeah. told yeah. me? Yeah. He's part of the far left Democrat operation, or else they wouldn't have made him look so good. That was yeah. the, 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 you know, 
Doc, you know, I, I listen. I can't, I don't. Have, I don't have an argument uh, for you. And, and, and before we let you go, Doc, I know you're 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 a finance expert as well. How do you think this uh, this uh, how will our, will our economy hold up? When will we recover, uh, Doctor Greer? What are you thinking, sir? Uh all right, boy. The social safety nets are completely gone. States are broke, and people are not even getting uh, uh, unemployment. At least back in 2008, people got unemployment. That Those $1,200 checks are finally getting out there. The p- paycheck protection loan has been squandered by big business. It's a joke. So they had better turn this economy around in the month of May. At 30 days from now, maybe we'll talk again because if unemployment okay. – today's unemployment is going to be like 20 billion jobs lost or something. Okay. If it's not better in 30 days, Trump just made himself a one-term president. Sorry, he did. Uh, oh, you, th- so, you think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, you know, his, I, base, I, I, his base is here in Florida, Ohio. Those people are the ones in food lines, okay? This is like the Great Depression, the Dust Bowl, the, except we have modern vehicles. This is really bad, and it better turn around in about 30 days or else Trump is not going to get the votes. And remember, he barely won the state of Florida and Ohio and so forth. He's not going to win that again if people are broke. So, You know, Dr. Greer, I, we appreciate your expertise. I appreciate you being with us. Uh, come back soon. Yeah, let's talk soon uh, because everything you've said comes to fruition. I don't know. I think the president is going to win it, but uh, I understand, uh, you know, how some of us can have access to our doctors, but uh, most of America d- does not, and most of America can't yep. even get food. So uh, the, yep. I, I hear you. We hear you loud and clear, sir. But uh, please come back yep. again. Doc, by the way, the name of the book is Rules to Stop Radicals, The Medical Advocate. You got to Google Dr. Stephen Greer. We appreciate it so much, Steve, uh, Dr. Stephen, and, and God bless you, and, and we'll talk soon, sir. Hey, great. Thanks a lot. Bye. Th- thank you. Uh, ba- Pandemic 2020 has been sponsored by Balance of Nature, helping your body help itself. I apologize. I see the calls. I apologize. I always get me with a doctor. Forget about it. I'm just going to talk, and I got a million things to talk about, uh, and, we'll, and we'll get to it. But uh, coming up, uh, Michelle Hall is going to talk about kids. We're going to talk about kids. We're going to talk about a book called The Great Influenza, the story of the deadliest pandemic in history. We got all the answers. I think we are the answer. Right now, Debbie's on the roads for you on AM 970, The Answer at 922. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Joe. Thanks a lot. Let's go to 78 Eastbound Express Lanes out by the Garden State Parkway. It's a paving project going on there, so stay with the local lanes. 94, as you get up toward Church Road in Hardiston, watch out for an overturned garbage truck. We're seeing a lot of emergency activity out there. Again, thank you to our emergency workers for getting to the scene of these accidents. Let's see what else is happening out here. Taking a ride over to the Whitestone Bridge. Looks like you have some construction in the left lane heading into Queens. Cross Bronx Eastbound slowing down, getting out toward the Sheridan. They're doing some ongoing milling and paving over there as well. Expect slowdowns as well on the Throgs Neck Bridge into Queens. Looks like you have some problems on the ramp there with some ongoing activity at the scene as well. Checking in on the forecast, partly cloudy today, high of 66. Partly cloudy tomorrow, high of 62. You now know where not to go. I'm Debbie Duhame with Joe Piscopo, AM 970, The Answer. Thank you, Debbie. If you're feeling run down, you don't have the energy you used to, it's time to try Balance of Nature. Try Balance of Nature. Remember, the best defense against any virus is your own immune system. And Balance of Nature is not like ordinary vitamins. Forget about the vitamins. Forget about it. It's filler, synthetic. It's, it, it, you eliminate it. You don't even use it. Balance of Nature is a vegetarian capsule with tens of thousands of vital nutrients from 100% whole food plants and vegetables. I'm laughing because... Al knows what I'm. What do you think I'm eating? Al, what do you think I'm eating? Eating the pop tart. <laughs> Mr. Healthy, Mr. Healthy over here. I really, am. I really smacking them lips too. It's great. It's great. <laughs> I tell you, I got a pop tart. I have a cupcake uh, pop tart actually. Oh, you wonder why play. I take Balance of Nature? Mm-hmm. Lord knows I need Balance of Nature. I'm eating this stuff. I said, I got to have balance of nature. Because again, again, I should be eating right now broccoli. Or I should be having some kind of sweet potato. Or an orange. How about an orange, Joe? How about that, Joe? No, I'll have a Pop-Tart, and then I'll take my balance of nature. You know, the thing about balance of nature is it assures that you get the vitamins in your body, the antioxidants in your body. And that's what when I don't, and if I eat wrong like that, 
Oh, please. I make sure I take Balance of Nature because Balance of Nature, just a daily dose, has 10 servings of 31 different fruits and vegetables and no Pop-Tarts in Balance of Nature. Balance of Nature now offering free shipping and 35% off on any new preferred order of Balance of Nature. We want you to start your journey to a stronger immune system and overall better health. You can eat some stuff on the side, like I have a Pop-Tart here and there or whatever, but if you don't take Balance of Nature, in my opinion, you're not going to build up your immune system, and that's what you want to do now more than ever. 800-2468-751. 800-2468-751. Or go to balanceofnature.com. Use that discount code, The Answer. Gregory Floyd, host of Reaching Out, gets answers to the tough questions from people in the know. My very special guest is Bill Baccalini, the CEO of the Foundling, which is formerly the Foundling Hospital. Tell us, one, about the Foundling Hospital, because a lot of people are used to that name and then go into the Foundling. We changed the name because what we do is really not hospital work. We, for many, many years, operated a pediatric skilled nursing facility, but the needs of the kids got so acute that the care needed to get more sophisticated. And so we separated, a new corporation was founded. It became the Elizabeth Seton Pediatric Center, and they have a beautiful, beautiful home up in Yonkers, New York, where they care for some very, very medically compromised children. It's Reaching Out with Gregory Floyd, Saturday nights at 7 on AM 970, The Answer. Chances are your home financing questions won't end when this show does. So the next time you have a question about home loans, ask the lending experts at Citizens Bank. They can help you every step of the way during the home buying process, starting with getting a pre-approval before you start shopping for a new home. Call 212-857-6668, 212-857-6668, and ask a citizen. Mortgages are offered and originated by Citizen Bank N.A., NMLS number 433960, Equal Housing Lender. Hi, Kevin McCullough. Have you ever had a legal question pertaining to elder law or estate law? Well, every Thursday during Kevin McCullough Radio, you hear from Mike Connors of Connors and Sullivan Attorneys at Law answering a listener's actual question. Simply email that question to askmikeconnors at gmail.com or call Mike's office at 718-238-6500. And don't forget to tune in to Ask the Lawyer with Mike Connors Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. on AM 570 The Mission and Sunday mornings on AM 970 The Answer at 11. Take AM 970 The Answer anywhere you go with our mobile app. Get in on iTunes, Google Play, or listen on TuneIn, iHeart, Alexa, or Radio.com. Did you listen to our podcasts? Hear them now on our website at am970theanswer.com. Hi, it's Joe on the radio. How you doing this morning? It's Monday. Hopefully everything's all right. We, we, we got this. We're going to make it. 927 on AM 970. The answer, Mike Gallagher is coming up at uh, 1005. Michelle Hall is a CEO of the Encourage Kids Foundation. I love this already. Hey, uh, Michelle, welcome to the program. How are you this morning? I'm great. How are you? Excited Good. to be We're, here. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I love it. Anything with kids, I love. Tell us a little bit about the Encourage Kids Foundation. Uh, what do you What do you do normally? So normally, what we do is support hospitals, support pediatric facilities specifically, in making sure that the psychosocial needs of of sick kids are being met. And what that looks like on the ground is us supporting art therapy and uh, and music therapy and sending in entertainers to make the kids laugh and and try to bring them some joy while they're going through a really challenging and tough situation. So that's what we would normally be doing. Uh, and also, you know, sending, you know, great products in to our teddy bear, all kinds of fun stuff like that. That's what we, we love to do, make kids laugh. Well, this is great. God bless you for doing that. And we know you had to cancel your 35th anniversary gala in March. That that must have been had a big impact on your organization. How, how else has this pandemic impacted Encourage Kids Foundation, uh, Michelle? Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. That was a tough call. We made the decision the day before the gala was going to happen. And so, oh, of course, there was all oh. this food left, right? And we were all devastated because we planned for it for months, but we took the food and we donated it to the Bowery Mission. So that made us feel a little bit better. At least the food didn't go to waste. But, yeah, you know what, Joe, you're really right. All those people that would have been in that room that we could have talked to about the mission and, 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 and raised funds from, you know, it, we just they just weren't there. And so we, we are really short of our goal. And, you know, right now 
the the situation for nonprofits is really tough, you know. Yeah. So, what, 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 who are some of your hospital partners? What has Encourage Kids been doing to help the children in those hospitals at, at this time? Tell us a little bit about that, Michelle, if you would. So we've got hundreds of partners across the country, but we're headquartered right in New York City. Our headquarters is right in the heart of Times Square, and wow. so a lot of our our, our on the ground resources are going to hospitals in the tri state area because that's that's where we started. And so we're serving every we're serving Mount Sinai, we're serving Bellevue, we're serving Elmhurst, um, and and everyone else. And we're out here just really pivoting, listening to what they need based on what's happening inside the hospital. When the COVID virus first showed up and really, really started to gain steam, everyone was scrambling for beds. And so in some hospitals, they'd move the kids all on one floor so that they could make room for the adult patients that needed to be coming in. And uh, they stopped, you know, obviously, if you're an adult or a kid, and you're not having an elective surgery, right? You're in there because you need to be in there. So kids are still in there with cancer and a lot of other things. And uh, they can't get the, the, the services that they normally would because, you know, everybody's really worried about passing this virus along. Yeah, and I know the nonprofits are getting slammed. No one's talking about that. I know because as, even as an ambassador myself for the Boys and Girls Clubs in New Jersey, yeah, trying. then they're doing these Jersey concerts, and I'm going like, hey, don't forget about the kids in the stressed areas or the kids themselves in the Boys and Girls Clubs, and I know you're running into that. And I, we're going to tell you in a second, if you're listening, how you can donate to the Encourage Kids Foundation because I, God bless you, Michelle. What was your impetus, by the way, to start this foundation? Sick kids in a hospital. Oh, my gosh, it just... We're talking about ripping your heart out, huh? Yeah, exactly. You know, I didn't start the foundation, but I've been with the foundation for probably nearly 30 years. I started as a volunteer, actually. Started volunteering, and somehow, you know, 30 years later, I'm running the organization. And it's 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 wonderful. You know, it is. It's gut-wrenching. But I remember when I first started, I thought, oh, I can't take this. I'm, I'm going to quit. It's too much. And uh, my boss yeah. said, you know what? We, we don't always we don't always see the best outcomes. But what would happen yeah, if yeah. we weren't here? What if we weren't yeah. here for these kids? Yeah. So, God bless you. Yeah. God bless you for doing that. You know what? Uh, uh, for, tell us about the virtual handshake challenge. That sounds great. What is that? It's really cool. So our marketing consultant came up with it. You know, we were all sitting around with our chin in our hands, sobbing over our gala because, you know, what are we going to do? And he said, you know what? Think about how many hands we would have shaken that night. And uh, let's do let's do a virtual handshake thing. Let's challenge people (laughs) to do a virtual handshake or another type of greeting and and donate when they do it and it just it kind of blew up and it's just you know we move we we kind of scaffolded right into national high five day we're going to keep going through the <laughs> national handshake day on june i think it's 25th and you know people love it because they're stuck inside and it's a great way that they can help kids and they can also send a little joy out there into the universe and it's really going well and i i, just, I would love for people to continue to participate in that Michelle Hall, CEO of the Encourage Kids Foundation. I understand tomorrow, Tuesday, May fifth, is Giving Tuesday. Now, uh, what, yes. where can we find it? Where can we find you online and make a donation, Michelle? So you can find us on every uh, social media platform. You okay. Google Encourage, just search Encourage Kids. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn. You can go in there and you can make your own Facebook fundraiser, which would be awesome in in, uh, in honor of Giving Tuesday now, which is a, is a wonderful response to everything that's going on now. You know, we have our regular Giving Tuesday during the holiday season, but this is Giving Tuesday now because everybody needs support now. Nonprofits need support because you know what? We're the ones on the ground doing the work. Right. We're the ones that's who exactly go out and move right. the resources from where they are to where they need to be. Exactly. That's exactly right. You're doing God's work, girl. Michelle Hall right there. God bless you. <laughs> and listen, all the very, very best. And uh, if you ever need anything, just give us a call. Uh, Encourage Absolutely. Kids Foundation. Keep the keep the fight, Michelle. Thanks for all you're doing. And God bless. Take care. There's Michelle Hall right there. I love that, helping out kids. Hey, uh, John Barry's going to join us next. It's 934. Joe on the radio. Let's go to Al Gattulo. He has the news live and local right here on AM 970, The Answer. News. Opinion. Passion. This is AM 970. 
The Answer. 65 degrees at 934. I'm Al Gattulo with local news first. Here's what's going on. The Dow is down 270 points at just a little over a percent and a quarter uh, in early trading. The Dow just opening just about four minutes ago. And again, it's down 278 points in early trading. J. Crew is filing for bankruptcy protection. The clothing retail chain, the latest facing severe financial problems because of the COVID-19 outbreak. The New York-based company announced today that it had reached an agreement to eliminate about $1.65 billion in debt in exchange for ceding ownership to creditors. The outbreak has forced the chain to temporarily close nearly 500 brick-and-mortar locations. And CBS is bringing theatrical movies back to its lineup. Raiders of the Lost Ark was shown last night. Sunday Night at the Movies is returning because CBS has no remaining unaired episodes of its Sunday evening scripted series. Production on God Friended Me, NCIS Los Angeles, and NCIS New Orleans was suspended due to the coronavirus pandemic. Other films that will air this month on Sunday Night at the Movies include Forrest Gump, Mission Impossible, and the 1997 blockbuster Titanic. The network hasn't aired movies since the CBS Sunday movie ended its 21-year run in 2006. In sports, Giants and Jets will soon learn their regular season slate. ESPN reporting the NFL planning to start on time and will release its schedule this week. Sports Business Journal reports contingencies will be in place to start as late as October 15th with the Super Bowl as late as February 28th. Stuck in traffic, Debbie Duhame has got the answer. Good morning, Al. Alternate side parking rules remain suspended. Metered rules in effect, taking a ride to the Whitestone Bridge into Queens. It's construction. Also, the Throgs Neck Bridge, right on that ramp getting into Queens to the Cross Island. Watch out for construction there as well. Traffic is moving a little bit slowly now on the FDR Drive. FDR Drive South. activity at the scene over there. Let's see what's happening as you head over to 94. 94 slowing down to both directions out by Church Road, getting up into Hardiston. That's an overturned garbage truck. All lanes subject to closure. You're going to be diverted around that problem. Over on Mount Prospect Ave into Bloomfield Ave in Newark, they're doing a construction project there. And 78 eastbound at the Garden State Parkway construction in the express lanes. Checking in on the forecast, partly cloudy today, high of 66. You now know where not to go. I'm Debbie Duhame with Joe Piscopo, AM 970, The Answer. With Advance Auto Parts, you get the part you need from the comfort of your garage. Order online and get your part with same-day pickup curbside or same day delivery it's the fastest way to get the part you need advance your auto at advance auto parts in business today being ready is more challenging than ever as you work to keep your doors open and employees and customers protected Cintas is here to help our trucks can deliver essential supplies like soap microfiber towels disposable gloves paper towels toilet tissue and safety glasses we can even sanitize your restrooms will serve you with the speed and dedication you need. Learn how Cintas can help your business stay ready at Cintas.com. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Dynavite for life. Pick up two tubes of Doggo Suds. Get the third tube free. Peppermint, tea tree, lavender, Doggo Sud shampoo. Made with all-natural coconut, jojoba, aloe. Great for healthy skin and soft, shiny coats. But no itchy, harsh chemicals. Lather up. Rinse away. Try Doggo Suds. Buy two, get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Hi, this is Dennis Prager. The longer I live, the more I realize that many people, a lot of people really, over 40 or 50, have aches and pains that can start affecting the way they live, the way they sleep or get around. You know what I'm talking about. Pete and Seth Talbot, the owners of Relief Factor, created this 100% drug-free supplement to help people like me, my wife, and just about everybody I know, with low back pain, my wife with her knee pain, to see if a 1995 investment, $19.95 investment for their three-week quick start can help lower or even eliminate your pain like it has for Sue and me. Pete and Seth do not make any guarantees, of course, but they do tell me that about 70% of those who order the three-week quick start go on to order more, which I think says a lot. Is $20 too much to see if we can get you out of pain too? Here's all you do. Go to relieffactor.com, relieffactor.com, or call 800-500-8384, 800-500-8384. Listen to us online at am970theanswer.com. Tune in, iHeart, Alexa, or radio.com. 
Hey, Joe, on the radio, uh, you know, it's hard to know who to trust when selling your home. If you're retiring or you're looking to sell your home, Calamine and Company Real Estate is the best agency for you. Uh, they only represent sellers, putting sellers' needs above everything else. Louis Calamine is my man. I gave him a call the other day. You know, we have so many good friends. That they're not. I don't. I don't look at them like sponsors. I look at them like family. You know, when they come on and they have enough respect for you to bring their products to you that make your life easier. And Calamine and Company is that. I had a great chat. He was. He was at the, the dinner table, about to eat dinner with his beautiful family. Louis was Louis Calamine, and we had a guy. How you doing? What's going on? What's the market like? And so, if you're thinking about it, I said I, I'm thinking about selling i talked to him a little bit about me maybe do i sell my house you know i go back and forth if you have any inkling about that we want you to call calamine and company right you can go to calamine.com but here's the number 718-998-1100 and they have uh, offices in brooklyn queens manhattan and staten island 718-998-1100 what i love about calamine and company aside from lewis being the great family man that he is you know and very very concerned and he knows real estate better than anybody they have a 100 percent uh I got this really. They have a one hundred percent success right rate. Try some yeah. in no, that, that, no, 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 that's not. No, it's the pop tart in my throat. <laughs> Stop eating the pop tarts. Okay, you're right. I'm, uh, thank you, honey. You're absolutely. I got the pop tart stuck in my throat. Oh my god, a hundred percent success rate from Calamite and Company. It's the best broker a seller can hire, especially when selling estate-owned properties. Calamine and Company Real Estate, 718-998-1100. Or again, go to calamine.com. Dan Proft, coming up tonight at 9 on AM 970. The Answer. Hey, Joe on the radio. I'm okay. No more Pop-Tarts. Eat the Pop-Tarts. Only me. No more Pop-Tarts, please. I got to forget about it. Oh, please. Hey, see, see, what goes around comes around. You think you can have a Pop-Tart, you can't. John Barry is a historian and author of the book, The Great Influenza, The Story of the Deadliest Pandemic in History. Uh, John, welcome to the show. How are you doing this morning? Uh, I was doing well, except I dropped my, my cell in the water, so I need a new oh, phone. My- <laughs> <laughs> you dropped your, your phone in the water? Yeah. But anyway, oh, but it's, it's okay. So you said, compared to trouble, some people are having now. <laughs> it sounds good. It sounds good, though. Hey, John, you know, I've been talking a lot about the speech that President Bush gave 15 years ago, and and, and he talked about the need to prepare for uh, a pandemic because he was reading a book about the Spanish flu. That was your book. How, how did President Bush come to read your book, sir? Well. Th- Tommy Thompson, who was his first secretary of HHS, was very right. interested in influenza. On September 11th, he was actually in a meeting on pandemic flu and uh, had to be pulled out of the meeting. Um, you know, my book came out a couple of years later. Uh, Thompson was gone, but an assistant secretary named Stuart Simonson read it, gave it to his boss, Mike Levitt, yeah, and Levitt yeah. gave it to Bush and, and – uh, the administration then launched a seven billion dollar pandemic preparedness program, uh, which created the national stockpile, vaccine technology, and vaccine technology, all sorts of things that we would be in much deeper uh, place than uh, we are now if it hadn't been for that Bush program. Wow, that's why. Yeah, Governor Levitt was on the program. That was so. So, how, how widespread were the deaths caused by the Spanish flu in both the U.S. and the world, John? Well, worldwide, it killed fifty to hundred million people, which, oh, if you God. adjust for population, would be two hundred twenty to four hundred forty million people today. So, it was much more lethal than what we're facing. Thank God. I mean, we're not doing facing that now, but what we are facing, of course, is bad enough. Yeah. Now, one of the things that was interesting about the, the Spanish flu uh, or, or just uh, just amazing to, to, to observe, as opposed to the coronavirus, is that most of the victims in the Spanish flu, correct me if I'm wrong, John, tended to be younger adults and not senior citizens. Exactly. In fact, the peak age for death was 28. So oh, my Lord. What, what how, how does a virus figure out whether it wants to attack old or young? I mean, why would the Spanish flu attack younger as opposed to older? and vice versa with the coronavirus? Well, the best hypothesis in 1918 is your immune system uh, changes as you get older. It's strongest when you're young. And the virus in 1918, just like today, could get into your lung, which is 
not the case for normal influenza. And the virus or the um, immune system was throwing every weapon it had at the virus, and the battlefield was the one that was being destroyed while the immune system was trying to kill the virus. That's the number one hypothesis, the one that I adhere to. And, uh, yeah. Today, it's sort of a catch-22. Older people have weaker immune systems. It's not weak enough. It's not strong enough to fight off the disease. But once the virus is in the lung, it is strong enough to do exactly what happened in 1918 with younger people. My Lord. And you had a fascinating op-ed in the New York Times back in March in which you talk about the single greatest lesson we should have learned from the Spanish flu. What was that lesson, John Barry? Tell the truth. You know, and obviously Cuomo learned it. Uh, unfortunately, some other people in another place in Washington haven't learned it. Well, in 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 the, the truth and the truth being what that it can uh, attack you that well, it really is, yeah, correct. That you know, let us know what we're facing. People can deal with reality and they can prepare for reality. Uh, you know, in 1918, they tried to minimize it for a different reason than today. We were at war, yeah, uh, and they thought they thought it would interfere with the war effort if people's morale was uh, challenged. Uh, and today, it's it's crazy. There's, um, it makes no sense even in from self interest. I don't understand why he, he trivialized it for so long. And, well, and I think didn't act. When, when you know, in the president's defense, and I thought the same thing. And correct me if I'm wrong, please, John Barry. That uh, John wrote this incredible book that everybody's talking about. It's called The Great Influenza: The Story of the Deadliest Pandemic in History. Who, who, Doctor Fauci said. In 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 uh, when it was in ja late January, no worry about it. And, and you saw and you saw that China China never warned them. I mean, uh, I, so you I guess you really it just there, kind there was of... plenty of warning out there. On Jan in January, I had an op-ed in the Washington Post saying, you know, this can this virus be contained? And I probably not. I said and that was January for me, and I had no special information about it. So you had the intelligence community, you had public health people. It, it was it was quite apparent to anybody uh, who yeah. really was paying attention that this thing was coming. And yeah. uh, we better we better get ready. And it's okay, but I'm wondering if we could have shut down the country in, like, March, even when Nancy Pelosi's in Chinatown or, or Mayor de Blasio saying, come to New York, it's okay to come to New York. Uh, do you think that they would have listened if the, if, uh, if Washington said, okay, shut down in March when we only had a couple hundred deaths? I guess I, I don't know that, that people would have listened. What do you think, John? I, that, that is a, a question. The, the shutdowns are most effective the earlier it happens, then you have a chance to get control of it the way South Korea, uh, you know, Taiwan, Singapore did, but also free societies like uh, like Austria and Germany. Uh, they shut down early. The thing is, there's no political support for doing it then because people don't see the need because nobody's dying around them. By the time that happens, by the time people would have it will give you political support for the shutdown, it's too late to have the maximum effect. Yeah. Um, it's but, it's a you know, right you're you're right, it's a tough situation. Is and do you think oh God, I'm I'm afraid to even ask you this. Are we in store for the second wave everybody's talking about, John? Uh it sort of depends on how we come out of lockdown. Uh yeah, you know, not to mention I had another op-ed actually last week on April 30th in the Times about waves. Uh, if we manage to, you know, keep our social distancing up, you know, follow other public health guidance, remain careful, there is a reasonable chance where the virus isn't going away anywhere. It's, it's here forever. Uh, okay. But we could conceivably, uh, you know, maintain a fairly – steady state with, you know, undulating swells, not so much a big wave. If, however, we screw things up, then you're going to get a, a wave, I think, that would be bigger than uh, what we've seen so far. Wow. And keeping Before people outside. in the homes. Yeah. About this herd immunity I keep talking about, isn't it better kind of just to, don't you have to foray out there at one point, uh, John, sooner than later? Or is that dangerous? Because you want to build up the immunities, No. 
Well, you do. I mean, the, the, none of these things are easy. But, yeah, yeah. you know, the number of, you know, think for a second, the reason they finally got Trump's attention uh, and he finally got behind close downs, however temporarily, was when he realized that the projections for the deaths were uh, as high as 2 million. And if you look at what we've, has happened so far, even with the lockdowns, where we are today, I think those projections of a couple of million deaths, if we had done nothing, yeah, uh, were, were pretty accurate. Now, we did do something. We've done a lot, uh, particularly in New York. You've, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. you certainly are turning the corner. Maybe the corner's already turned in New York. Uh, you know, but if, if we relax too much, I'm not saying everybody needs to stay in their house for the next six months or anything like that. Um, but if you relax too much, then, you know, you are going to get a second peak that will be worse than what we've seen so far because the virus yeah. is more widely distributed than when we started. And in terms of herd immunity and so forth, you know, we're basically in a race for a vaccine. And we want to minimize the number of deaths and the social activities, the mixing of people, until we get the vaccine. Hopefully, that sooner rather than later. Hopefully, the vaccine is very effective, uh, you know, in the 90 percent uh, effectiveness uh, range, as many vaccines yeah. are. But it, uh, then we, then society can get back to, to where we were. Yeah. Uh, again, nobody's advocating staying locked down in your house and not going to work and so forth for, for the next, you know, six months or whatever. Uh, but when we do come out of lockdown, the social distancing is going to be very important to keep this thing under control. There will still continue to be spread. And there will still, unfortunately, continue to be deaths. Uh, but there's no yeah. way of avoiding that. And hey, John, I got to let you go, man. We, this is a fascinating conversation. John Barry, historian, author of the book, The Great Influenza. Uh, before we, and I know we're under the gun, guys, the time clock. But, you know, I keep watching these, uh, you know, the, the documentaries from 19, like, 20 or something. And everybody was out dancing. And, and I keep thinking, oh, my gosh, just a couple years ago, people were dying. 50 million people died. So people come back to normal. I mean, and, 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 and they come back to normal. Uh, and, and, it, and we will get there. We will get there. And they seemed to do it back then. In, in it seemed to be a short time after 1918. In, am I wrong? Because I, all those videos. No, you're, of the... you're right. I'm, this one of the biggest differences between this virus and 1918, unfortunately, is the time frame. Uh, influenza moves a lot faster. Uh, the incubation periods one to four days. Most people get sick at two. This is two to 14 days. Most people get sick at, sick at five or six days. The disease lasts longer when you're, when you're sick. You shed virus longer. It stretches everything out. So in 1918, influenza would hit a city in six to ten weeks. This is going to be much slower moving. Got That's it. the whole management problem. Yeah, all right, John Barry. Thanks. Uh, come, you're welcome here anytime. Just to get to the bottom of this, and we appreciate you taking the time. And I'm glad your phone's working okay, uh, Mr. Barry. Thank you so much. My wife. <laughs> my wife. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Take care, John Barry. Right there. Debbie's on the roads. Nine fifty three on AM nine seventy. The answer. And good morning, Joe. Thank you so much. Let's see what's happening here as you take it over to the Throgs Neck Bridge. We see some construction on that ramp to the Cross Island. Looks like an accident involved over there as well. 95 southbound slowing down as you get down toward exit 17 in Westport with construction over in Connecticut. And 94 in Hardiston. It's an overturned garbage truck. Expect delays in both directions with a diversion. I'm Debbie Duhame with Joe Piscopo, AM 970, The Answer. Are you tired of all the garbage that Hollywood puts out? Why not redeem the time you're spending at home with your family and watch something that affirms our American values? For a limited time, you can purchase No Safe Spaces, starring Dennis Prager and Adam Carolla. Go to nosafespaces.com to stream the number one political documentary of 2019. Free speech is under attack now more than ever. 
politicians on the left are threatening to permanently shut down churches and synagogues. And we can't even open a debate about when we return to work. There is no more important time to watch No Safe Spaces, the movie that the hard left does not want you to see. Go to nosafespaces.com. Use the code SAVE25 to get 25% off your purchase. That's SAVE25. This offer is only available for a limited time. Send the message to Hollywood that you support movies that support your values. Go to nosafespaces.com today. Do you know that about 70% of people who order the Relief Factor three-week quick start, that's for $19.95, you try the product for three weeks, about 70% order it again, which means it's working. Pete and Seth Talbot are so proud of what they've accomplished with this tremendous product. I love Relief Factor. I love the family of, of people who bring the product to the world. I love the, the way it works. I like that it's all natural. It's not ibuprofen. It's not a, a prescription. It just works. It's made from wild-caught fish oils and botanicals. goes to work on the, pain, on the inflammation that causes pain. And again, the fact that the vast majority of people renew, that shows that it's effective. Try it. Just give it a shot. If after three weeks it isn't working for you, you know, follow the instructions. Three packets the first week, you know, two packets the day the second. If it isn't working for you, notify them. You're only out 20 bucks. What do you have to lose except a whole lot of pain? ReliefFactor.com, ReliefFactor.com, or call 800-500-8384, 800-500-8384 for Relief Factor. Here's your AM 970 weather answer forecast. Times of sun and clouds today. It'll become windy and much cooler than yesterday. Watch out for an afternoon shower in spots, the high 65. The patchy clouds tonight, blustery and colder, low 42. Sunshine mixing with clouds tomorrow, a cool breeze, high 61. For Wednesday, chilly, plenty of clouds, a little bit of rain in the afternoon and at night, the high Wednesday approaching 60. AM 970, the answer. Hey, Joe on the radio, tell you about Connors and Sullivan. You're worried about your estate. You're worried about your financial legacy. You're worried about who, who do you trust? Who can you trust? You're worried, are you protected from probate and nursing home costs? I'm telling you, it's something you don't want to have to worry about. You need a will. You need a trust. You need the power of attorney. You need a health care proxy. You need a living will. You need an estate plan. You need Mike Connors. That's what you need. I'm telling you, Connors and Sullivan have been helping people like you plan their estates and protect their families for 40 years. Talk with Mike Connors himself in a free comprehensive telephone consultation and see how he can help you protect your family, your assets, and your legacy. Have all your questions answered from the security of your home during these crazy times. The biggest mistake, the biggest mistake when it comes to estate planning, not planning at all. Now is not the time to put it off. Now you can get a free telephone consultation from Mr. Connors himself. 718-238-6500. Call Mike Connors. Put your mind at ease, 718-238-6500, or visit, please, connorsandsullivan.com. Hey, Joe on the radio, I uh, appreciate it very much. You know what? We got a break. Thanks for the phone calls. Please stay with me. So I, do, I just want to cover all bases this morning, and I just don't, I don't like when uh, the blame game is going on, and I know I think we should all stick together now during this pandemic, whose fault it was, whose fault it wasn't. I mean, know the mistakes made, but now that we're there, how do we beat it? You know, what do we do? And I think we have the medicine to do it. We have.